Y'all got your Bible with you today? Let's make our confession of faith together today. Say it like you mean it. I know you do. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Today, I will be taught the uncompromised Word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll not leave the same as I came in Jesus' name. And every time I come to Church on the Rock, my faith, my life gets stronger and stronger. You sound so good. Give the Lord a good praise, would you? A praise of victory. Amen. Open your Bible with me today to the New Testament, to the Gospel of John. The New Testament, the Gospel of John. I'm more excited about this series than any other series thus far this year. We're talking about how we're made for a mission. Now, on Wednesday nights, we still have Wednesday night service at Church on the Rock. We're kind of like Neil said, old school. And we still have a Wednesday night service. And on Wednesday nights, I'm talking about right now what the Bible has to say about the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you, if you can make it on Wednesday night, come out, be with us. But on the weekends, we're talking about how you were made for a mission. Should you accept it? Right? It'll be mission possible for you with the help of the Lord. So let's go right to the Word, John chapter 17. Now, many of us know the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, right? We know that's the Lord's Prayer, and that's a great prayer. It's a good model prayer. And Jesus was praying, and his disciples saw him in Matthew chapter 6, praying. And they were so energized by his prayer life, they said, teach us how to pray. So he taught them the Lord's Prayer. But I want to take you a little deeper, because that is not the prayer Jesus is praying for the church today. The prayer that he's praying for the church today is found in John, the New Testament, chapter 17. John chapter 17 is what we call the high, Jesus is the high priest of the church, the high priestly prayer of Jesus for the church. And we know from our Bible that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father today, making intercession for you and for me. What is he praying? Wouldn't it be great to know what he's praying well, this gives you a little insight of what he's praying for you and me. In John 17, it's all red letter. Jesus is talking. Jesus is praying for the church. So let's look at it. John 17, verse 18. And let's all read it together on the count of three. Can we do that on a Sunday morning? Here we go. One, two, three. Don't you love the Word of God? It's so simple. I mean, you got to be crazy to complicate it, right? I mean, look, Jesus is saying, Father, you gave me a mission in the world. Just like you gave me a mission, Father, I've given them. Who's them? His followers, Christians, born-again people. Now, if you're here today and you're an unbeliever, we're so glad you're here today. You might be visiting with us and you don't know the Lord. You might be an atheist or an agnostic. We welcome you. We're so glad you're with us today. So this doesn't pertain to you, but it pertains to us who are Christ followers. Those who are Christians. Those who are believers. Those who are born again. Notice, he said, I have given them a mission in the world. So let's say it together, I have been given by God, a mission to the world. Oh, that's so good, isn't it? Now, you have a mission to the world, but you have a ministry to the church. If you're a note taker, I'd write down the word ministry, and then I'd write down the word mission. Two different things. As believers, this will absolutely change your perspective on your Christian life. As believers, we all have a ministry. The Bible lets us know that every member has a ministry, right? Now, what is that ministry, Pastor? I'd like to know what my ministry is. Well, your ministry is called one another ministry. In the New Testament, you'll see the phrase one another many times. It's called the one another ministry. 
This is the ministry of a believer to another believer. So when we set our foot on the campus of Church on the Rock, those of us who call this church home, then you walk on this campus, you have a ministry to one another here at Church on the Rock. It's a ministry to the church. It's called love one another. It's called serve one another. So when I came here today, I didn't come here for me. I came here for you. I came here to love you. I came here to honor you, to respect you, to prefer you, all the one another ministry. So you and I, as Christians, we have a twofold call. We have a ministry within the church, and we have a mission outside the church. And the ministry within these four walls is called one another. We are to consider one another. You know what that means? That means as you're walking around today on our campus, look for people who are all by themselves. Look for people who are isolated. Look for people. Consider one another. It means to study. Be aware. We care, so we're aware. Consider one another. It simply means that, that be aware because there are people here today that are lonely, that are hurting. There are people here today that want to get off of drugs and alcohol and pornography. There are people here today that are discouraged about their marriage and, and their career and their job and are struggling raising their children. So what are we supposed to do? As a ministry, we are to consider one another. We're to pray for one another. We're to exhort one another. I love it, don't you? We're to encourage and lift up one another. We're to respect one another. We're, we're to do all these things as Christians in the church inside these four walls. It's called ministry. But once you get in your car, motorcycle, truck, bike, or horse, however you came, plane or train, once we go outside these four walls, we have a mission to the unbeliever. Ministry to the believer, mission to the unbeliever. And we need to understand that because then that will make us a balanced Christian person. We'll be balanced. Some churches, and I grew up in the church, some churches, all they care about is ministry within the church. And they really don't have a heart for evangelism. Other churches, they're all evangelism-based. It's outreaches. It's out in the community. And then the saint gets weak and can't live an abundant life. At Church on the Rock, for 35 years, I've tried to maintain a balance. We help build a house in Guatemala, but yet also we help in the inner city church, amen, with backpacks. Uh, we, we are con concerned about world missions, but yet every service I equip you with the teaching of the Word of God. Because that's what I'm supposed to do, is to equip you for the work of the ministry. Can, am I helping anybody so far? So everybody say, ministry, say mission. It's so important. So if I want to be a balanced, thriving Christian, if I want to go to a thriving, on fire church, then I need to understand, as a Christian, I have a ministry within the four walls called the local church. It's one another. But then when I leave that campus and go out into the world, I have a mission to the unbeliever. I can't forget them. Now, the church, you know, worship was great today, wasn't it? I mean, I love that song, Daniel and Macy were singing. You know, I loved them all, but I love that one about free from, free from fear. I love that. Didn't you love that? I mean, you know, the church gets stronger through worship, gets stronger, you know. And then the teaching of the Word, as you know, that's dear to my heart. I mean, I'm a pastor teacher. I love to teach the Word. It's a privilege to be your pastor. I love to teach the Word. Through the teaching of the Word, we go deeper. See, I want you to go deeper in your roots, be rooted and grounded in Him today. That's, that's important. Small groups. We have small groups at our church, and small groups are great because the church grows warmer, gets warmer through fellowship, warmer through fellowship. But the church only gets larger. The church only gets larger through evangelism. The church does not get larger through worship. It does not get larger through the word, and it does not get larger through small groups. The church gets larger through evangelism.
And that's our mission as a Christian. It's a ministry one to another inside the house, but it's a mission to the non-believer outside the house. Am I still helping somebody? Okay, so let's look at John 17, next verse. The next verse, if we could, verse 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. And folks, that's what you and I want to do. We want to make God look good. To glorify God means to make God look good. To glorify God means to honor God, reverence God, respect God. You see, that should be our whole life's purpose. Listen very carefully. To please God. I am not here today, and I love you with all my heart, but I'm not here to please you today. I'm here to please God today. Amen. Tomorrow morning, uh, you know, I've been married, Kim and I, 45 years. But tomorrow morning, my number one objective is not to please Pastor Kim. It's to please God. Now, there are priorities in that, right? But you and I, our main objective should be to please God. If you want the favor of God, if you want the favor of God, if you want the blessing of the Lord, you have to please him. Don't have to do anything for him to love you, but you got to please him for him to bless you. And notice he said, I've glorified you on the earth. How did you do it, Jesus? I finished the work. So notice our mission is a work. It's an assignment. It's a work. And it's a mission. And we're not to do it half-heartedly. Like Pastor Kim said, we want to make sure we lead everyone we're supposed to lead to a God who's for them before we die. We don't want to die before our time. We don't want to miss out on our mission because there are only people you can reach I cannot reach. And there are people I can reach you cannot reach. Can I have a yes in the house? There are people you are assigned to. There are people you are assigned to that you can reach them when no one else can reach them. And we don't want to fail in our mission. We want to succeed in our mission. So he said, I've glorified you by finishing the work that you gave me to do. Acts just look on the overheads, chapter 20, verse 24. I don't care about my own life. The most important thing. Would you say that with me? The most important thing. Can you say it one more time? The most important thing. So what is the most important thing? It's not making money, and we should do that. It's not building a family, and we should do that. It's not starting a business, and hopefully a lot of you are doing that. But the most important thing, according to the Bible, what is it? Scripture answers Scripture. The most important thing is that I complete my why. So pastor is teaching the most important series of the whole year. I'm teaching you the most important thing. The most important thing is to know your mission and to know how to fulfill your mission. And I want to help you with that today. Is that okay? So he said, the most important thing in my life is to complete my mission, the work that the Lord Jesus Christ gave me. I want to know what it is, Lord. What is the most important work and mission and assignment? Here it is, family, to tell people the good news. That's the most important thing in your life, evangelism. The most important thing, once we get born again, spirit-filled, once we're fulfilling our ministry within the church, the most important thing is to go outside the church and take the church to the world. The most important thing is to go out and tell other people, not bad news, but good news. The gospel, that word means good news news. The Bible is good news. So we're not to go out there and condemn people, judge people, be cynical, sarcastic, bigot, prejudiced. We're not to go out there with a holier-than-thou attitude, right, church? We're to go out there and tell them the good news. That's your mission. That's the most important thing in your life as a believer. The only thing you can't do in heaven is witness, the only thing you cannot do in heaven is witness. Witnessing is a temporary assignment. Witnessing is a temporary assignment on this planet right now. It's the greatest mission that God has given to you and I. And what is it? To go outside this campus and tell other people the good news. What's the good news, Pastor? Number one, you tell them that their past is forgiven. Their past can be forgiven. Isn't that awesome? You know, we all got things in our life that we can't even get over, that we can't forgive ourselves. 
that we need God's grace, God's mercy, God's Holy Spirit to help us forgive ourselves and forget our past. So people want to know that can they get over their past? Can they get past their past? Wow. There are people that only you can identify with, only you can connect with, that no one else can. Can I have an amen this morning? Okay. So he said, that's the good news. So now we know what it is. Let's go to uh, Mark. You can just look on the overheads. Mark 16, verse 15. And Jesus told them, you are to go. Everybody say go. Everybody say go. One more time. Go. You're to go into all the world and preach not bad news, not bad news, not bad news, not religion, but the, and you know what it is, right? Past forgiven, purpose given, a place in heaven. He said, go tell the good news. Pastor, who should I go tell out there this afternoon? Tell everyone everywhere. Everyone everywhere. Everyone everywhere. That's our mission. Remember, you have a ministry with, inside the church. It's called one another. You have a mission outside the church, and that's to let them know the good news. And who are we to tell? Everyone, everywhere. What does that mean, pastor? You just blab it everywhere? No, no, no. It means you be intentional. It means you have your spiritual antennas up. It means you're looking and listening for people you can identify and connect with. Build a bridge with them as a friend where later you can carry the good news over to them. Amen, somebody. All right. So he says, go into all the world everywhere to everyone. Now look at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, just on the overheads, verse 19. Y'all still with me, family? Okay. And he said to them, come after me. This is Jesus talking now. As disciples, letting me be your guide. You know, we got to let him, right? God won't force himself on us. We got to let him. Let me be your guide and what? Follow me. And he said, if you're following me, if you're following me, I will make you fishers of men. Now, the church isn't going to get larger through the worship. We get stronger. Church isn't going to get larger through my teaching. We go deeper. Church isn't going to get larger through small groups. We get warmer. The church only gets larger through evangelism, telling people outside these four walls the good news. Now, if you're a note taker, I'd like for you to write these three points down. Number one, following, following. Notice Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you. Follow me and I'll help you. Follow me and I'll help you with your mission to be fishers of men. So everybody say following. Then the second word I want you to write down is going, going. If I'm following him, then I'm to be going. Going where? Into all the world. Telling what? The good news. To who? Everyone, everywhere. So if I'm following him, I'm going to become a fisher of men. If I'm fulfilling my mission, my assignment, my work, I'm going to have a heart for lost, hurting, undone, wounded, broken, bleeding people. Crying, sighing, dying humanity. Can I have a witness in the house? So everyone say following, then say going. And the third word is bringing. Wow. This makes sense now. Why I'm a Christian. This makes sense now. Why, when I got born again, God didn't beam me up, Scotty, like Star Trek. This is why he left me here. This is why I go through what I go through. You go through what you go through. This is why God left you here. Because see, if he wanted you in heaven, he would have beamed you up after you and I got born again. It would have been over. But he left us here with a mission. Should you accept it, and I know you are. What is that? To go outside the four walls of the church and tell the world the good news. What is that? Past forgiven, purpose given, place in heaven. Who do I tell? Everyone, everywhere. How does that work? I look for people I can identify with the same interests, build a bridge of relationship where later I can carry the good news over to them across that bridge. Does that make sense? So then if I'm following, then I'm going to be going. If I'm going, then I'm going to be bringing. I'm not going to be inviting. Selah. 
Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. Go with me, if you would, to Luke chapter 14. This is a powerful, powerful, powerful. Luke chapter 14. You still with me, family? Okay, now, random acts of kindness, right? We're going to look at that in just a minute. And we've given you some cards out in the lobby. When you leave today, take as many as you want. And I love it. It says just a little extra to show you God is for you. And then on the back, it says, and so are we, Church on the Rock. You know, Pastor Kim and I, you know, last week we got some of these, and we went and got a gift Monday, and we put the card with the gift. Pastor Kim took it to a family. They don't go to our church. They don't go to any church. You know, I'm tired of stealing people from churches. <sighs> and, uh, and, uh. And anyway, so Pastor Kim took that gift with the card to them and gave it to them Monday. They were blown away. What was that? Just a little extra to show them that God is for them, and so are we at church on the rock. It opens doors. We'll come back to that. All right, so look at this. He said unto them, a certain man made a great supper, and he invited many. Everybody say invited. Okay, next word, next verse. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to them, that they were invited. Bidden means invited. Come, for all things are now ready. Next verse. And they all with one consent begin to make. People who are invited make. And he made excuses. The first one said, I bought a piece of ground in Louisiana, and I got to go see what it looks like. This dude needs to come to church. He needs some wisdom on investment. You're going to buy land you've never seen? Dumb and dumber. Okay, next verse. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen. Now remember, they've all been invited. Uh, I bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to go see if they're okay. Pray that I be excused. Next verse. Another said, I married a wife. She don't want to go to church, so I'm the head of my house, but she's the neck. Let's turn the head, so I guess we're not going to go this Sunday. That dude needs to be in family counseling. Next verse. So the servant came, showed his Lord these things, and the master of the house got angry at his servant, and he said, go out. What did he say? Go out. Following, going, bringing. Okay? How we fulfill our mission. So he said, showed the Lord this, the master of the house being angry. He said, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring. Did you all see the word? Bring. Y'all see, bidden didn't work. Inviting didn't work. Inviting is not enough. Inviting is good, but inviting is not enough. Notice, he said, we invited all these cats. All of them had excuses. So he said, I want you to go out and bring them in. So how do we fulfill our mission? By following Jesus, becoming like Christ. Then going everywhere everyone, and then building a bridge, and then bringing them to the house of the Lord, where they'll find freedom, deliverance, acceptance, approval, and love by an almighty God. So he said, and bring them, bring the, the poor, the maimed, the halt, the blind, as the team comes out. They're not blind, maimed, and halt, but they're coming out, praise God. <laughs> Next verse, <laughs> and the servant said, Lord, it is done as you've commanded. And look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, look at this. And he said, but there's still empty seats at Church on the Rock. Yeah. Oh, what are we supposed to do about that? It's just the way we are now, Pastor. And just once a month, that's the current fad and the thing and blah, 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 blah. Are we going to accept that? No way. Next verse. And the Lord said to his servant, go. So I'm telling you what the mission is. I'm telling you, Dan, how to fulfill it. It's through following, going, bringing. And what is it? With good news. And so he said, the Lord said to the servant, go out into the highways, the hedges, and compel them to come in that the church, the church, the church, that God's house would be half empty, would be full. It's God's will that every church that's preaching the gospel be full. It is not the will of God for empty seats here and full ones at the casino. 
and it's God's will, you know, for us, our ministry is within the house. Our mission is outside the house. It's following. It's going. It's bringing. Bringing them with us. And what are we doing? How are we doing that? Telling them the good news. And what are we doing? Connecting with people like us. And what are we doing? We're telling them our story. And what are we doing? We're making God look good. We're glorifying God. And what's happening? God's house is increasing. And it's God's will that every seat is full in every church that's preaching the gospel, the good news. Is that Bible? Notice when they invited them, they didn't come. They had to bring them. Bring them. Brought them. Now, i got one more verse. Can you handle one more? Romans chapter 2 and verse 4. I love this because here's the secret sauce. Man, I think of secret sauce. I think of home cooking. Wow, my mom, your mom, your grandmother, right? Your aunt got some stuff with recipes that only they know. Had some secret sauce. Well, pastor, what's the secret sauce? How do we get them to come? There's a secret sauce. What is it? The law of kindness. The law of kindness. Look what the Bible says. Oh, are you so blind as to trifle with and presume upon and despise and underestimate the wealth of God's kindness? Are you unmindful or actually ignorant of the fact that God's kindness, are you noticing the word kindness, church? God's kindness is intended to lead people to change. It's the kindness of God. It's not going to come through a homily. It's not going to come through a homily. It's not going to come through a sermon. It's not going to go through some song you and I like the spiritual. It's going to come through that secret sauce, a special sauce, a special recipe called the kindness or the goodness of an almighty God. Kindness opens doors. Kindness gives you favor. Kindness causes people to let their defenses down. Kindness, according to Scripture, will lead people to a heart change. Change their mind, and look what the Scripture says. They, without preaching at them, without being critical and cynical, hard, demoralizing, putting them down, what will it do? It will cause them to accept, through kindness, God's will for their life. You all see it there? Isn't that good? So the secret sauce to fulfill our mission is the law of kindness. And that's what these little cards are. Today, I'm going to lunch. I'm going to take my family, and I'm buying. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give a 20% tip with this little card. And it's going to say just a little extra to show you God is for you. And you know what? That will build a bridge between me and the waiter or the waitress. So next time they won't run and say, here comes one of those Christians on Sunday. I mean, no, I love y'all. Y'all get something? I'm out of time. Give the Lord a good praise, would you?